I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Guys, if there's one thing that I really am passionate about, it's, it's parallel charge boards. But if there's two things that I'm really passionate about, it's parallel charge boards and flight controllers. Um, well, some of my most popular videos have been these all-in-one flight controller roundups where I just look at all the flight controllers and I pick them apart and I say all the things that I don't like about each one and help you guys figure out which one suits your needs the best. So you can imagine how I jumped at the opportunity to develop my own flight controller in partnership with Race Day Quads. And that's what I'm here to tell you about today. Uh, I, this video is the official announcement on my channel of the J. Bardwell F4 flight controller, an all-in-one by Race Day Quads. This is the product page for the flight controller. And if you want to know all the details about the specs and everything, of course, you can go ahead and check that out. I'm going to focus on some of the highlights. I would also encourage you to check out the manual, of course, being me, I wrote a manual for it, and yeah, it's like 20 pages long. I think it's a real shame that so many flight controllers come and you, you buy it and you just get a board in the mail. Maybe you get a, like an XT60 lead, and I mean, you just get to figure out how to hook it up. And I have a video series actually that I made. It's like a six video series where I talk about how to wire up any flight controller so you can figure it out. I'll put a link to that in the upper right. Huh, yeah. But wouldn't it be nice if flight controllers came with a manual that told you actually how to wire it up and like if you're experienced and all you need is to know that like s bus is uart one that's like the first page of the manual but then if you need somebody to just hold your hand and take you through every step put this wire here put that wire there yeah my manual does that too and i've even got like a glossary of terms in the back for people who might it's not a there's too many terms it would be 100 pages long but it's got a few of the most common terms that you see and the specifically the ones used in the manual to try and help somebody who's new know what they know what to do with this new piece of technology that they just bought so let's take a look at the features of the board now the board takes from 3 to 6s input power it uses the mpu 6000 gyro now a little bit of history of gyros here the 6000 gyro was the one that was very common on older flight controllers like to go back all the way to the nays 32 it had the 6000 gyro and although it's the oldest one it, it kind of turns out that it's the best when we went from the 6000 gyro, I think it was the Lumineer Lux flight controller that was the first to have the new 6500 gyro. Why is it better? Well, because it's got higher numbers. Yeah, right. So it must be better. <laughs> There's more to the story than that. But the Lux came out with a 6500 gyro and people are having all kinds of problems with gyro twitches, with the, their motors twitching and their quadcopter twitching. And it, nobody knew what was causing it. Actually, a real mystery for a long time. And it was eventually tracked down to the gyro chip. It's just more sensitive to noise. And that's when, remember when we used to all hard mount our flight controllers and nobody even thought about soft mounting? Yeah, well, that was one of the reasons we started moving to soft mounting. And nowadays, we have these uh, gyro chips. They start with the ICM, the ICM 2802 or whatever the number is. And they're like better they can do some things that the older chip can't like 32 kilohertz sampling but they're also really sensitive to noise and it turns out that Betaflight doesn't really do anything with 32 kilohertz sampling anyway in fact on Betaflight, if you enable 32 kilohertz sampling there's a fair chance your quadcopter will fly like crap so when we picked a gyro for this board i'm like just go with the one that works and we did so the MPU 6000 is the gyro that's on there. That's the good one. And one of the design goals for this board was that I didn't want it to, I didn't want you to have to stick a bunch of capacitors on it. You know, like some flight controllers, you get crazy noise issues. I want a clean video and no gyro twitches without having to stick a bunch of capacitors on it. That's one reason I chose this gyro. Another thing I did was, well, I say I, we, I work, race day quads helped a little bit. Another thing we did was uh, we put gummies in the corners. Now, I soft mount all my flight controllers with rubber standoffs. That's the typical way that I do it, and that works fine. But the rubber standoffs aren't always the right height. Um, it's, it doesn't always work great. You sometimes have to really work around that, especially if you're in a stack where you have multiple rewards, one, two, three. The extra height that the rubber standoffs require makes it hard to fit it, especially in tight frames like the Armitan Chameleon. You also have the approach taken by the Holy Bro Kakute, which I, I worked closely with Holy Bro on the development of the Kakute. And actually, the soft mounted gyro on the Kakute was, I'm, I'm proud to say, it was I was the one who suggested. I didn't invent that idea. I wasn't the first to think of it, but I think I was the one that suggested that they give that a try. And so you may wonder, well, why didn't I go that direction with this board? Uh, 
I, th well, I think that this is a more robust approach. Um, because we've got the good gyro, and because we've, that's the, the one with less noise issues, and because we've got these soft mounting gummies in the corner, I think we can get away with hard mounting the gyro. And that means it's easier to fit this board into a, like a tight stack where the soft mounted gyro on the Kakute would get in the way. You also have to worry with the soft mounted gyro on the Kakute about wires hitting it and stuff. So I do think there's a place for the Kakute and its soft mounted gyro, especially if you absolutely have to hard mount the board for some reason. But and that just wasn't the direction I chose to go with this board. The voltage regulators on the board are five volts and 7.6 volts at 1.2 amps. And some of you out there are wondering right now, 7.6 volts, what? what like you're more used to seeing something like 12 volts as the as the secondary regulator. The reason we went with 7.6 volts goes back to the desire to have clean video. Now, some quadcopters out there are not going to have clean video no matter what you do, okay? So we can't guarantee that 100% of people are going to have clean video with this flight controller. But our goal was by, by having the 7.6 volt power, we you increase the difference between battery voltage and the output of the voltage regulator. And if you think about it, a voltage regulator is actually a kind of filter. It's trying to output a consistent regulated 7.6 volts, no more, no less. So when a noise spike comes in, a voltage regulator has some ability to filter that out. And the more the difference between the battery voltage and the output voltage of the regulator, the more effective it is at filtering out those spikes. So what we figured was like most vo most video transmitters will do okay down to about 7.2 volts, right? Uh, not all of them, right? But most of them. And so by running at 7.6 volts, you give it a little bit of headroom so that you don't sag out and, and power and brown out. But then you have the maximum filtering from the voltage regulator. That's that's the goal anyway. If you have a video transmitter that needs five volt output power, like, like the TBS Unify, right? Unify five volts probably the most popular five volt video transmitter out there, then you're gonna need to use either the receiver pad here, assuming you're using a five volt receiver, you can just double up there with the receiver, or there's a five volt pad on the underside of the board as well that you can get at to power it. But our thinking, maybe we got this wrong, but our thinking is that most people who are running video transmitters are running at somewhere between like 2S and VBAT and therefore 7.6 volts is gonna give the best filtering for the most people. The reason that we didn't really focus as much on five volts is also that you need a really a, a pretty big regulator to get solid power on five volts. And uh, the 1.2 amp regulator here should do it, but making everybody run at five volts and just suck on that amp, uh, suck on that regulator like that just didn't seem like a good idea. Now, if you look at the pad layout here, we can talk about the UARTs. And we put a lot of work into designing the UARTs so that we could have a clean and concise pad layout without a lot of extra pads that you aren't using, but still give you all of the functions that you're going to want. And the functions we focused on were obviously serial receiver, smart port telemetry, smart audio, and ESC telemetry. Uh, and I'm happy to tell you that whether you're doing SBUS or you're, whether you're doing um, a non-inverted protocol like Spectrum Satellite or, or uh, FlySky iBus, you can do all of those functions, all four of those functions at the same time, the exact details on how to shuffle the UARTs around and make everything work are in the manual. Another question that absolutely has to be addressed is some of you may have noticed that this board uses the Seal Racing F4 hex file, and you may also notice a few cosmetic similarities to the Seal Racing F4. You may be also wondering, you may have heard that the Seal Racing F4S has this problem where with certain ESCs under certain conditions, the voltage regulator browns out and the quadcopter does a spin of death into the ground. And you may be wondering, People are asking, hey, does this board have the same problem? And the answer is no, it does not. The power system, the layout of the ground plane, the way the regulators are laid out and everything is completely different on this board from the F4S. In fact, when the F4S started having these problems, we looked at the design of the board and said, hey, you know, we tested it with some ESCs and, and no, this board, although it has some cosmetic similarities and some functional similarities to the Seal Racing F4, it does not have the roll of death problem that the F4S has. So set your mind at ease there. Now, if this were anybody else's flight controller, the next thing I would do is tell you all the things I feel like the board designer got wrong. But since it's my flight controller, I'm not going to do that. No, of course I'm going to do that. This is the part of the video that Race Day Quads wishes I would just, happy flying, everybody, goodbye, and shut up. But, you know, the, the, I, I told you I've been working on this flight controller for like six months now, and the whole process has been 
uh, like th they'll show me the prototype and I'll be like, oh, that's pretty good. Y you know what? I just thought of something I think we should change. And then like two weeks later, they'll be like, hey, check it out. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, I like, you know what? I just thought of another thing I think we should change. And at some point, uh, Tyler, Tyler Brennan from Race Day Quads was like, listen, dude, we, ju we have to ship a product eventually. We have to sell some. You can keep changing it, but let's just sell some today. How about that? <laughs> and that's the board that you're looking at now. But there are things that I continue to want to make better about it. And hopefully that's just, you know, that's one of the nice things about this is now that this is like my board, uh, every time I think of something that I want different about it, I'll just say, hey, let's do this. Let's do that. So here are some things that didn't quite make the cut when we just went, we have to ship a board today, <laughs> eventually. And one of the things is that although this board does support ESC telemetry, the ESC telemetry pads are not on the corners. So if you look at some boards like the Betaflight F4, the ESC telemetry pads are over here in the corner, and it means it's much easier to, by the way, ESC telemetry, what that means is that the ESC can send telemetry data back to the flight controller, data like RPMs of the motor or, uh, or current sensing are two of the things that are commonly done. So the ESC telemetry pads that go in the corner, well, here's the thing about ESC telemetry. Um, with ESC telemetry, all four of the ESC wires go back to the same UART. It's a, little un it's a little unusual. Usually you'll have one device on one UART, but that's not how it works. And some people have said, hey, Joshua, how hard would it have been for you to put the ESC telemetry pads at the corners? And, you know, we all have blind spots. It just didn't occur to me that you could have four different UART pads in four different locations on the board all going to the same UART. All the wires go to the same UART. Of course, they need to go to the same pad. Okay, you're saying what an idiot right now. I know, but we all have blind spots. I just, like, didn't think of it. Another thing about it is that it's not the best if you want to use Crossfire. And here's what I mean by that. Crossfire requires both a transmit and a receive pad, okay, on the same UART. And if you look at the board, all that fancy shuffling and slicing and dicing I did to try and let you get all the functions you need with as few pads as possible means that there's only one UART available that could do Crossfire. So you can do Crossfire with the board. You'll need to use pins RX4 and TX4. And so you'll have five volts going to the receiver here. You'll have RX and TX coming all the way across the board and they're not even right next to each other. And you know what, does it really matter? No, but it could be better. You know what, I would nitpick somebody else's board. Like, why can't I have RX4 like right next to it, right? Can I have two of them together? So as we're looking at changes we'd like to make going forward, we might try to think about how we can better accommodate Crossfire users. But today, you can use the board with Crossfire. Just your wiring is going to be a little bit messy. There you go. That is going to bring us to the end of this video where I have introduced and even kind of reviewed and picked apart the uh, Bar Bardwell F4 flight controller all-in-one by Race Day Quads. Uh, I, I want to say thank, thanks, first of all, to you guys for helping me get to a position where, uh, where I was able to do this. You know, it's all well and good to pick apart everybody else's product and say what I like and don't like, and somehow I've managed to make a little bit of a, a successful c career out of that. <laughs> well, uh, but um, it's a whole other thing to put your money where your mouth is and to design your own product for other people to pick apart and complain about. And then f stick with that product and try and continue to make it a success. And that's really what I hope to do. I hope to to see this forward. People are saying, well, why didn't you put an F7 on it? Well, you know, we're going to we're gonna go with this and continue to make it better. And every time there's something about it that I don't like, I'm going to go over to Tyler and say, Tyler, next batch needs to have this, needs to have that. And that's one of the reasons I'm just, I'm just to kiss a little butt right here. That's one of the reasons that I uh, partnered with Race Day Quads on this project. Um, this is this. You might imagine that somebody like me gets a lot of offers to slap my name on some product, you know. And I, you'll notice I haven't done it because I'm not interested in just slapping my name on a product for a quick buck, right? I only want to make products where number one, I can bring something original to the equation, which is why my um, my parallel charge board was the first product I ever made. It only has 4S balance connectors. And people are like, why don't you put some 3S on there? And I'm like, no, that's not the point. That's the selling point, <laughs> right? That's my unique idea. And my, my reason for partnering with Race Day Quads on this is number one, that I've just seen them totally kick ass in terms of customer service, shipping, speed, everything. I've just been super impressed with how, how they run their company. And if you're a customer of theirs, then obviously you, you agree. 
but the other thing is that like they're there's the speed with which they operate is unreal like i'm not kidding when i say they would show me a prototype and i would be like hey what if you did this and they'd be like sure no problem i've never gotten the least bit of pushback from from them on any of my ideas um except the bad ones but i don't have too many of those and and it me it really fills me with confidence going forward that as the market evolves and it evolves very quickly as soon as there are new good ideas to put into this board bam I'm going to get them in there and we're going to get them right in the next batch so that this can continue. If it's not the best board out there today, then, you know, hopefully soon and then hopefully we'll keep it there. Uh, anyway, tell me what you think of the board down in the video comments. Thanks again to you guys for watching my videos and helping me be as successful as I am. Thanks to Race Day Quads for helping me make this dream a reality and, uh, you know, happy flying. Shit, what a day. Bye, everybody.